The North American Soccer League game on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Some doctors are dropping their malpractice insurance and telling their patients, go ahead and sue. Watch 60 Minutes tonight on CBS. It's halftime here at Tampa Stadium, and of course you know the score, three to nothing in favor of Tampa. And I have two of the executives, uh, co-owner of Tampa, Bo Rogers on my left, and Clive Toy, who's been in the North American Soccer League for a great number of years, uh, who is the president of the New York Cosmos. And I'm not going to talk about the game itself because I don't want to embarrass you, Thanks, Clive. Mario. Thanks. But I, I, I'd like to talk specifically about where the league is going. You are going to three sellouts this year. Is it because of Pelé on your team or is it because soccer has caught hold? Well, it's both. Pelé's arrival has uh, focused in on all the great things that have been happening in soccer. You know, the, the base is there. We have so many hundreds of thousands of kids playing it, so many fans already. And the arrival of Pelé has just crystallized this great soccer movement that's been going on for the past five years. Now, you're a pioneer, a missionary, and, and you really started uh, your influence in soccer when you first came here from England. Now, you're an American. What is the interest you have uh, to, to invest large sums of money in a franchise and, and to be involved in a new sport that is trying to find uh, it, its place in the sun, if you will? We feel that um, soccer will be the next major sport in this country, and um, in order for us to get in on the ground floor, so to speak, we bought a franchise two years ago, and um, we feel that uh, we brought an entertainment value to Tampa, and uh, we've given them, we give them a great value for the money, and uh, we feel that you know that within five years, soccer will take its place along with football and basketball and, uh, as a major sport in this country. Now, this is a, a genuine crowd. We're not talking about 40,000 avid fans here. How do you develop fans like that in a short period of time? Well, I'd say that we, we develop it by, again, giving entertainment. You know, soccer is like any other thing, is like any other thing, is an entertainment. And uh, we promote it well. We've got some very funny slogans. Um, our slogan is soccer is a kick in the grass, which I think kind of sums it up. I think our name is uh, unique, and uh, we've, we've just promoted it properly, we think. Five? Well, I think we've started off with a game which in itself is a great game. And so many kids are playing, so many people are liking the game. And if you p promote the game professionally, get the best possible players and do a thorough professional job, that added on top to the natural beauty of the game, and you have it. It's paying dividends. Clive Toy, right. thank you very much for joining me here at halftime, and Bo Rogers, you too. We'll be back with more soccer after these very important messages, and we'll be back here at Tampa Stadium. Here's the deal. Sue does the inside, and I do the outside. Better get busy, hon. <laughs> she thinks I've got the hard part. She doesn't know about Sprint car wax. Sprint is so easy, size is no problem. Wipe it on, and you get a real wax shine. It cleans road film and grime, and see, there's no buffing. Harry. Yeah. Oh, poor baby. Uh, oh. J-Wax Sprint cleans and shines without buffing. We're going to prove that Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. First, listen to an unshaven face using an ordinary credit card. Now we'll shave the left side with foam, the right with Edge. With Edge's protective lubrication, we pressed harder to shave closer than foam. Now listen to the foam side. Then listen to the Edge side. Foam. Edge. Edge lets you shave closer than the leading foam. To the companies trying to make luggage as good as ours, Samsonite presents a lesson on a perfect gift. That durable Samsonite classic attaché only opens right side up and see how it organizes. We try to make working easier and safer. We know more about business cases because we make more. Samsonite keeps going strong. Get a six-month day timer and Schaefer pen all worth $15 free with classic three attachés. Safeguard's deodorant lather is so effective, it doesn't need heavy perfume. Safeguard gives you naturally clean-smelling skin. Good morning. Hi. You always smell so fresh. What about me? I use a deodorant soap. That's just it, Norman. You smell like a deodorant soap. Good morning. Clean. Cute. 
back with Safeguard, you don't get the heavy smell of some deodorant soaps. You get naturally clean smelling skin. Next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular will present an exciting show featuring the Daytona Motocross from the Daytona International Speedway, where the most celebrated field of motocross riders will compete. And the AAU National Boxing Championship from Las Vegas, a major stepping stone to the Olympics. That's the Daytona Motocross and National Boxing Championship next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular. We're here at halftime and still in the press box, of course, and Paul Gardner has joined me again. And three to nothing is a surprising score because when you look at the two sides, it would seem that there, it would be, in fact, the Cameron was noting that it might be a dull game because of the defensive strategy. Let's take a look at that first goal. Here is Glover again, beating his man, playing it across the goal mouth. Smethurst. Smethurst, glancing header, this time from the left post, and of course, Kaikendall not able to get to the ball, beaten. But not you, really faulting Kaikendall on that. Here's the next goal again. Parried by Kaikendall, not held, bounces loose. Best, pouncing on the rebound, slams it into the net. Teams are on the field again, and uh, we'll see. Uh, Strategy-wise, Paul, you're talking about three-goal deficit by New York, and they've got to come back. What do you think Furphy might have been talking about as far as maybe game plan or maybe substitutions? We haven't heard of, of any substitutions. I think what he would undoubtedly have been telling them is that they've got to tighten up on their defense. They've got to close down that midfield area, stop allowing Rodney Marsh and, for that matter, Len Glover, all the room and the time they've had to set up these goals. The crosses and so on that have been coming in, the ball coming into the New York penalty area, are what's causing trouble to New York, and they should be stopped. The midfield players have to be stopped. There are a number of other NASL games today. Vancouver's at Rochester, San Antonio at San Jose, and Washington, Boston, Dallas at St. Louis. So there are... Uh, around the country, but the NASL today features, of course, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, the New York Cosmos here at Tampa, and New York now defending the goal to the left. The North goal, they've switched sides, which is customary in soccer at halftime to change over. And the white-shirted Rowdies now, Glover. Beautifully played out of defense by Tommy Smith there. Marvelously cool piece of play. Solo run by Len Glover all by himself. Puts the ball through all by himself. There's a shot. New York, New York appealing for offside on that, and they're not going to get it, so they're going to be doubly unhappy having a goal disallowed in the first half and now having a goal scored when they claim a player was offside. I think they were wrong. I don't think that player was offside. Watch it again. There's the pass. No, he's not offside. You've got to have two men. You've got a green-shirted man. Got a green and you've shirt. got a goalie. It is not offside. There's the left-footed shot out of Kaikendall's reach. You must have two defenders between you and the goal at the time the ball is passed to you. Discussion going on in midfield between Keith Eddy, the New York captain, and Pelé. I don't know whether they're trying to apportion responsibility for that goal, but again, we saw a very leaky New York defense. Can these, first of all, the Rigby change at the last moment, and then these three stunning goals in the first half, and then this fourth stunner, could this take them completely off stride? Well, it may take them completely out of the game. I, I really don't think a team is possible in the space of 45 minutes in any soccer game of surmounting a 4-0 lead. I think this is now Tampa's game, but New York, of course, will be trying desperately to do something about that. What about foraging and actually looking for the ball and trying to beat Tampa to the punches? That well, one? that's what they've got to do. That's what I'm, I'm suggesting they have to do at midfield. But again, you see, what, here is a Tampa fullback being allowed all the time in the world. Rodney Marsh letting the ball go straight through his legs. A superb piece of play. Glover again, who has been... Oh, a great run! A, a dummy, if you will, where... Rodney Marsh, a man without the ball, very dangerous, decoys, and best got the ball. You were mentioning earlier on, Mario, what effect the tempo of this game is having on either team. I don't think tempo is a factor. LA just failing to get the ball through the field there, who was running in inside him. I think the tempo has not been that fast. After all, it is pretty hot down there. And I don't think... Uh-oh. Smethurst again, the danger man, the trigger man, shoots and collected by Kaikendall. Didn't get enough boot on him. No, well, he, of course, he was running more or less at right angles to the direction he wanted to kick the ball. Difficult to get power on a shot under those circumstances. Here's Dave Clements. 
It's a very simple game to understand, really. The ball is always exposed. 11 players on each side. We're in the second 45 minutes. And uh, the infractions, as they happen, we will at least outline them to you. Rodney Marsh. Here we see an example there. Clements at least is getting to Rodney Marsh. He's tight on him now. He's forcing him to run backwards. And that is what New York were not doing in the first half. Clements still with Rodney Marsh. But Rodney Marsh still with the ball. <laughs> oh, Clements did not like that bit of taunting from Rodney Marsh. Rodney Marsh going down on his knees, pointing to the ball, saying to Clements, here it is, if you want it, take it away. Clements, of course, couldn't get it, and that he did not like that bit of sort of that teasing. That was uncalled for. And there's a lot of roughness all of a sudden now. Now, a bit of showboating on the part of, of Rodney Marsh. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if he and, do and that the, in the English league. No, and the referee doesn't approve of it. And in fact, he's given New York a free kick, probably for ungentlemanly conduct on the part of... Um, I forgot, Britishers started this, did they not? Yes, ungentlemanly conduct, unsportsmanlike conduct in All American right. terms. Peter Bringing Johnson. the game into disrepute. This is a league game, this is not an exhibition game, and New York are behind four to nothing. It's not an exhibition game, but Tampa are giving us a fine exhibition here. Tall Mauser. Best coming all the way back. He scored one goal, and yet the stamina the soccer players have, he comes all the way back and helps on defense. See, Tampa playing with the ball now, absolutely confident of the four-goal lead. The game is theirs. They don't feel they need to take any risks at all now, and obviously they're not going to. They're really slowing the game down now. Glover has been the, the playmaker, if you will, passing the ball well to the strikers to score, and Smethurst and Clyde Best have repaid him in kind. They certainly have. It's... I believe Smethurst does have a hat-trick. This season he has one hat-trick, and now he has two goals in this game. One more, and he has a hat-trick. Hat-trick in this game. So Smethers do does have a hat-trick. Yes, he does have a hat-trick in this game. The, the goals are coming so thick and fast, Mario, I'm losing count of them here. He has three goals in three this game. Three goals. And three very good goals, too. Like in ice hockey, three goals is hat-trick. Rodney Marsh again, on the right, chips it across. Should be a corner kick, the way it went best. The referee the is pointing for corner, corner kick to Tampa. Smith is there, a beleaguered defense of New York. Although this does not look like the lineup for a corner kick. No, the ball is coming back, but players all ran back expecting a corner kick, but it's not. It is, in fact, a throw-in. No, it's not, it's a goal. in the second half as you see Tampa Bay for New York and again Tampa Bay with a corner kick here in the early moments of the second half and it's a right footed ball that will curl inward Kuykendall collects it in his blue jersey the only player on the field within that rectangle known as the penalty area to be able to touch the ball with his hands a little bit of an experience on Kuykendall there. He really needn't have gone for that ball. That was headed by a Tampa Bay. If it had gone over the goal line, it would have been a goal kick. But he dove for it, and he needn't have done that. Field with the ball. New York. Pelé. A bit slow. Pringle cutting off the pass. Best holding. 
foul on Dillon. Again, uh, Best and Dillon having their little battle out there. This time the points decision goes to Mike Dillon. Free kick, New York. Pelé. Tinian. The Takes shot. a shot. Get his own player. And Field got in the way. Yeah, that field. ball was yeah. heading goal wide. And Field got in the way. New York have a corner kick out of it. Corner kick that is going to be taken by Tinian. He'll use his right foot. Swing away from the goalkeeper. Oh, far too far away. Nice move. Garbutt. Oh. Referee no tripping. Go. Garbutt. When I said nice move, he used his body swerve, went one way with the body, still kept possession of the ball, and faked his defender out. Dangerous ball. Kinalia has... Well, we saw something very interesting there, Mario. That was Kinalia and Stuart Jump going for the ball, and Jump won out. The jump, as we know, is only 5 foot 9. Kinalia, there he is, is actually 6 foot one and a half. He was out jumped there by a man who's some 4 or 5 inches shorter than he is. Kinalia has been so good in New York in front of hometown fans. Here he is not playing too well. There's a chance. The ball coming across the goal mouth. Kinalia had it at his feet, but the ball was muffled by Pringle. And Mauser was there with his big arms to collect it for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Pringle. There's Dylan on Best again. Best winning the ball again that time. And again getting a free kick. Foul by Best on Dylan. Long ball from Garvin. Right into Mauser's arms. In two weeks, CBS Sports will present the Pro Bowlers Association National Championship and, of course, the Kemper Open. That's next Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 4.30. CBS Sports presents the $250,000 Kemper Open with defending champion Ray Floyd shooting for the $50,000 first prize along with Tom Weisskopf, Lee Trevino, Gary Player, J.C. Sneed. That's the Kemper Open next Saturday, 5 p.m. and Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So on the CBS Sports schedule, the basketball came coming up. Golf will tell you about, of course, uh, bowlers coming up also. Tommy Smith there. This will be a free kick to New York. Or a foul on Tony Field. Taken, I think, by Dave Clements. There it comes. Pelé. Pelé! A turnaround shot. Control the ball. Tampa Stadium and Tampa in a commanding lead here second half. The white-shirted Tampa's, the Rowdies, four to nothing ahead. And they are in total control, Paul. Total control, Paul Gardner. Complete control, and I think New York must be wondering what on earth they can do to pull at least one or two goals back in this game. One goal, of course, would give them a lot of fire, but uh, that, that's a really commanding lead for... I think they must be regretting giving away at least two very easy goals in the first half. And in your analysis, you said that Kuykendall was not to be folded only because too much space was allowed. Best again, Tampa Bay Rowdy chips the ball across the goal mouth, but no one there on that left side. Kuykendall. 
course, on any goal, there's a series of errors usually that lead to it, and uh, the goalkeeper's is always the final one if he makes an error, and he's the one who gets the blame. I would fault Kuykendall on the second goal, but not on the others. Smethurst. This is Pringle. Tampa Bay slowing the play down somewhat. Lindsay. Pele. Tinian out to the left side. Again, Pele. Playing it back. Kinalia. Still in control in that penalty area. Dangerous. Tries the scissors. Spectacular effort by Giorgio. Blocked by one of the Tampa defenders. As indeed they've been blocking shots all the afternoon. Rodney Marsh out to the left side. Glover. A dummy sold by Smethers. And Marsh is there. Has the ball. A fine tackle. Good tackle by Ron. Dylan. Very fine tackle, a sure tackle, went for the ball, no intention of getting Marsh down. I think for the first time in this game, we're seeing some constant New York pressure now. They've, they've had the ball in the Tampa half for about the past three or four minutes. That's a lot of pressure. Uh, as soon as I say it, of course, they give it up. Clements losing the ball, trying to beat his man. Glover again. Rodney Marsh standing still, putting his foot on the ball, walking calmly, deciding what to do with it, being given all the time in the world to do it. Smethurst, a shot. Wide. Smethurst was very smart on that. He, I think he tried to fool Kuykendall with the pace of the ball. He just tried to slither it by him, and Kuykendall watched it by. Yeah, it was a dipping shot. He got his foot underneath it and up it, giving the ball spin, which makes it swerve about in the air. And that does create problems for a goalkeeper. Garbutt. You see, there's a bad example of New York. Two players going for the same ball. Terrible. Pass. Wasted pass. Good hustle. Well, he's reclaimed his own error, and I think that was a blocked shot. The right, referee says it was not, so we're either going to get a foul call or a goal kick. Well, I see a big divot there, so I, <laughs> I guess he got the turf at the same time. They're playing on turf here in some of the stadiums throughout the United States. Uh, they use artificial turf, and uh, the players sometimes find it difficult, I guess. A lot of the players don't like it at all. I think for many of the same reasons that professional football players don't like it. Injuries, and it certainly does something to the nature of the game in soccer. Soccer is a game where the ball's on the ground a lot. Ground surface is very important. We've got a wonderful field here, beautiful grass here. Field with the ball. That must be a free kick to New York in a, quite a dangerous position. Field, Field, in fact, is having a bit of an argument there with Pringle. Temper is a little high now on the part of New York. We are in the second half, and New York uh, behind four to nothing. About 29 minutes left. I'm amazed to see New York not moving more players up into the penalty area for this. I think with New York now, this is an all-or-nothing situation. Rodney Marsh. <laughs> Known for his attacking skills, and yet here he is in a defensive situation, heading the ball away. His attitude uh, comes through. He's a very loose player. There's a lot of fight, but he takes everything in stride. He's very casual about what he does. It's a cross from Garbutt. Here's a chance. Oh, yeah. Muffed. That was Field Field. trying to volley it into the goal. And he smothered the ball. Pelé was right behind him. I think Pelé is saying to him now, you shouldn't have taken a shot. You should have pushed it back to me. As Pelé was facing the right direction. Field, of course, was not. There's Kinalia. Kinalia. Booted out by Pringle. Clements. The defense of Tampa very, very strong. Closing holes very rapidly when tested. And again, we're back to that, that game plan strategy. Uh, if they're to get on the ball, will the big stars have to exert more individual pressure? I just want to comment move. on that fine pass by Pelé's put, putting Smith loose on the right, but again, it's Pringle who comes racing across, puts ball out for a corner. Now, it's an interesting thing that Smith, as a fullback, and, and uh, British fullbacks do that a lot, they trail the play, and suddenly a quick ball comes, and it's a fullback that you don't expect to see running up the line getting the ball, and that's exactly what you pointed out, Paul. Yeah, Smith should have a lot of room when he does that because there's nobody guarding him or marking him. 
Tinian, two goals, two assists in the season. There's the goal mouth, as you can see. The players taking position. No offside, of course. Uh, it can't be offside because the ball is on the farthest line of the field. So anything goes here other than, of course, a personal foul that might happen. Cleared away. Tinian again. Brings it under control. Chips it across the goal mouth. And over Field's head, a little collision on the other side. Field moving in the wrong direction here, I'm afraid. That... We had a header across the goal from Kinalia. It came to Field, but instead of moving towards the goal, he moved away from it. Stadium and New York trying very, very hard to get into that net with a goal. And as you can see, Tampa Bay 4 0, and Pele and Kinalia now exerting a little more presence in this game. Oh, a caroming shot off of August, hit by Dylan. But Mauser, who has played an exceptional game, I think, very sure, a lot of confidence. Yeah, and a goalkeeper being confident, of course, gives a lot of confidence to the defenders playing in front of him. They know they can rely on him. New York, I don't really know exactly what New York can try now. Tampa are playing so well. Oh! oh best. Best. A little razzle-dazzle by Clyde Best, and with a little room, catching his defender napping in front of him, chipped the ball with a swerve, and he caught Kai Kandal napping, and it hit the corner upright and came out. But it was a brilliant individual effort by Clyde Best just a moment ago. Tampa continuing to threaten. It was, I don't recall, Paul, a conversation specifically, I know that you told me about it, about Pelé and, and Mauser and, and the Team America. Well, Mauser, of course, was a goalkeeper for us. This time it's Stuart Jumper, not Pringle, who saves the day. Mauser, of course, was one of the three goalkeepers selected for Team America, and there were three games played by Team America, and Mauser did not get to play in any one of them. And I no doubt he was very disappointed by that. Some people As said he was the best player. Yes, indeed, Tampa fans, I think, have, have a, a gripe, and that is why they booed Ken Furphy's name, the Cosmos coach, when it was announced, because oh. Ken Furphy was the coach of Team America. He did not select Arnold Mauser. Oh, what happened like to Pelé and Mauser in that conversation? Supposedly they had a confrontation. No, oh, this was uh, Furphy and Fermani with the confrontation. But I, I remember that, that, that Pelé came up to Mauser and said, I'm sorry you didn't play in the Team America with me, but you will play, and play he has. He has kept New York from scoring. Well, if that's in fact what happened, then Mauser has certainly lived up to what Pelé said he could do. All right, Glover again. Tampa through. Glover chasing the ball. Kuykendall comes up. Brave move by the goalkeeper. Off his line very quickly that time, Kuykendall. Very quick to sense the danger. Glover breaking through. New York with a chance here if they move the ball quickly, but they continue to do it at rather a lethargic pace. Garbutt being fed by Pelé, out to field, field with the ball. New York Cosmos Smith flying. Smith again outside in the fullback, here he comes. Fine defensive play by Stewart Jump. Very calm, very cool, pushing the ball back to Mauser, not getting into difficulties at all. Set plays versus extemporaneous type of play. Uh, and discipline plays a big role in this. It seems that uh, Tampa Bay's efforts are more coordinated than the New York Cosmos. Well, of course, they are. But on the other hand, they have a four-goal lead. And uh, when your four goes down as New York, uh, your play does often tend to get a bit ragged. Not that it wasn't ragged at the beginning of the game, but it hasn't got any better. 
Mauser, of course, from Brooklyn, New York, and the Brooklyn kid showing the big boys from New York. 22 years of age, 6'2", 185 pounds. Tampa Bay fans clapping, cheering, and roaring for every mood night. Well, they might, because their team has played brilliantly. And here's Field on a break. On his own, goalkeeper to beat only. Great Beautiful. shot! Well, we must fault Mauser on that, I'm afraid. I think that went straight through Arnie Mauser's legs. Great shot. So New York have managed to get on the scoreboard. Here is Field. Let's see where that ball goes. Straight through his legs. He didn't cut off the angle close well, enough the, on this the ball, side. the ball came straight to him. He should have stopped it. But, you know, we'll, get, we'll credit Tony Field for a good run and a fine shot. New York now, one goal back, will be presumably be increasing the pressure to the point if they can get another one on the board, they may begin to think that they can do it. So they've averted a shutout. They are on the scoreboard. We are well into the second half. It was 4 to nothing, and now it is 4 to 1. So New York, this may give them, of course, that, that uh, shot in the arm that they need. And we'll see. Field and an individual effort and a mistake by Mauser, as uh, Paul pointed out. Second half, Tampa Stadium, 40,000 people. Still bright sunshine. Breezy up here high. And the temperature has to be 75, 78 degrees. Oh, my best. best. All by himself. Nobody called offside, but that was a very close call. The linesman had his flag up there, and uh, there didn't seem to be any dispute as there was when Pelé's team was called offside. No, well, I think the, the goal that New York had called is Kinalia beaten that time by Mark Lindsay. It's a series of two passes that were very pretty to see getting the ball to Kinalia. Pelé in a one-push type thing lobbed it behind him. Again, New York Cosmos on the attack, dribbling inside the penalty area. Oh, Field still has the ball. Scored the only goal. Headed away. It was August Smethurst. Bangs it downfield, and Best is the only horse up there chasing. The North American Soccer League game on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Sonny and Cher zero in on some favorite monsters in tonight's comedy with Raymond Burr as guest, here on CBS. Here's Pelé taking a shot just a moment ago at Mauser. You see it again, and Mauser parries it beautifully. What we won't see is the fact that Pelé, as he walked away, applauds Mauser and says, fine save. There's Pelé. We have a substitution here, uh, Mario, on the tackle side. John Bloom coming in for, of all people, Tommy Smith, the captain. John Bloom. An American. Young American Tommy player. Smith. On that save, we just saw a very hard shot from Pelé, parried by Mauser, but unlike Kaikadol in the first half, he got hold of the rebound. He did not let it run loose, and of course, the save was made rather than a goal being scored. Smethurst. Clyde Best on the left, loses the ball somehow. Yeah, for the first time he looked clumsy this afternoon, otherwise he's had a brilliant game. You know, you bandy words around uh, uh, people in soccer who, who, who play it and are purists, and they talk about constructive soccer. There's a run through, field again, and Mauser pulls it in. Well, that's more like the Mauser we're used to, grabbing the ball and holding it. Constructive is a bad adjective, Paul? No, I think constructive is a, is a very good word indeed. Mauser again, From being Clarence. very constructive. It conveys very well what a player should do with the ball when he gets it. He should look, he should see where one of his teammates is, and he should give it to him instead of just whacking it anywhere. Stuart Scullion. Lindsay. Smethurst. Tampa Bay now, the, the hat-trick man, Smethurst. Scullion with two Cosmos defenders on him. Smith and Rowan. Double teamed, as they would say. Still with the ball, plays it back, but a trailer man is there to pick up the loose ball, that's and Tampa the, still the new man, Bloom. Rodney! We opened up this broadcast, Paul, by saying 40,000 people in the sun here, very colorful crowd, setting a new record, a league record for a regular season game. Uh, that figure is wrong. It's 42,611. It's still a record, but it's more than we had anticipated. 
A one-on-one -on -one duel going on the left side. It's Pringle. And the ball played across the goal mouth. And it is a corner kick. It was field causing Pringle quite a bit of trouble there, getting the ball across, and it was eventually run out by a defender. There it is now. You don't see that too clearly, but the ball, in fact, was pushed out by a defender. So it is a corner kick to New York. Here it comes. Tinian taking it. Headed into the goal mouth area, and Mauser is there. Still has a Mauser down out of position. Tinian again. Plays it to the middle. Clements looking for a teammate closer and perhaps to get a better shot. Out to the left. Pele wall pass. That's the give and go. Puts it across the Good goal center. mouth. Mauser. Another great save by there. Mauser from the header by Smith. Plenty of pressure from New York now. Now when you see Mauser outside of his uniform, he looks very big and lumbering, and yet he's most agile. He's very agile for a big man. His only fault, uh, Coach Fermani tells me, is that it's the same. Well, I'll shut up while Kinalia takes this effort. Straight into Mauser's welcoming arms. Now the pressure has changed. Uh, New York now attacking more consistently and more shots taken, but from farther out. Well, Tampa have at least eight men back on defense now. They've decided that this is a 4-1 game, and they're going to keep it that way, and they've brought, as I say, eight people back. Very difficult for New York to penetrate that sort of packed defense. Fifteen minutes approximately remaining. Unofficially, of course, the referee, and you wanted to talk about the referee, the next opportunity we have. He keeps the clock. I'll just finish what I was saying about Arnie Mauser. His only fault, according to Coach Fermani, is that despite his huge, almost intimidating size, he's a very shy boy, and he will not shout and take calm. Now, there's the referee. I wanted to say that in a soccer game, it is so important. This is Peter Johnson, an Englishman from Canada. The referee plays such an important role in a soccer game. He's there on his own. He's the man who makes all the important decisions. Everything comes down on his head. Bad bounce, giving New York Cosmos the ball. Pele. New York certainly looking more coordinated now. They have done for the last 10 minutes here. But They're using space a lot better. It seems all of a sudden the field has taken a different perspective in that they are having a lot of room to maneuver. Field again through, and a shot that just whizzes My by the word. front post. Mauser seemed to be lost on that one. I really don't believe he'd have let that shot go if he'd known how close it was going to be to that far post. He never moved for it as though he was confident it was going wide, but it was, in scientific terms, about two angstrom units outside of this far post, I would say. Damn close, in fact. Thank you. When we talk about the near post and the far post, the near post, obviously, for those of you who are watching soccer for the first time, is, is the post closest to where the ball is. The far post, of course, being on the other side. There really was no need, but we've used that near post, far post a couple of times. Now, again, the ball keeps coming back to New York, and again, they're being allowed time to push it forward. Mario just slipped some statistics in front of me. Very even. Saves by the Rowdies goalkeeper, Mauser, 11. By Kuykendall in New York, 10. That does not reflect a 4-1 score. Shots on goal. Rowdies, 18. New York now, 22. More shots on goal. Foul by Keith Eddy. Now, I was going to mention... I was going to mention Keith Eddy, and down is number 12. Uh, number 12 being Smethurst. Smethurst, the hat-trick man. Now, Keith Eddy, who played so well for Team America... We'll be back to talk about that. Next Saturday of...
This is a corner kick taken on a brilliant save by Kuykendall on a header by Clyde Best. And Kuykendall played that shot beautifully, parried it over the bar, and we have a corner kick now. To be taken from the other side of the field instead of this side. The referees decided that the ball went out closer to that side of the field, so the corner must be taken over there. Here's the goal mouth. Uh, Smethers, there you see Smith of New York, Clyde Best, the tall, number nine, and here's Stuart Scullion. Plays the ball across the goal mouth. Pelé controls it. Slows the ball down a bit. Make sure a position player is running into, onto the ball. Garbutt. New York Cosmos. Garbutt. Plays it out to the left. Clements. Field. He's been all over the, the field. Smith from his right back position playing in the center of the field now. Being chased. Tinian. Keith Eddy. Keith Eddy has not played with the assurance that he had as a, as a member of Team America. Well, of course, with Team America, he played in midfield. Here he's back to his sweeper position. It's Pelé going for that ball. Kinalia in front of the goal. Marvelous control by Kinalia. In that but heavy traffic. But again, exactly. He's got so many defenders back there with him. Really going to be very difficult for New York to break through at that sort of range. Smith. Corner kick again for New York. Smith is protesting that he was held there. Somebody grabbed hold of his shirt when he was going for the ball. The referee did not see that. Another example there, Stewart jump, this not too tall man jumping with Canalia, beating him to the ball. Losing the ball and then giving it away. About 10 minutes approximately left. Next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, CBS Sports Spectacular will present an exciting show featuring the Daytona Motocross from Daytona International Speedway, where the most celebrated field of motocross riders will compete and the AAU National Boxing Championships also from Las Vegas, a major stepping stone to the Olympics. That's the Daytona Motocross and the AAU National Boxing Championships next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, on the CBS Sports Spectacular. I'm thinking, Mario, that the right back for the Tampa Bay Rail is Arsene August, this very, very supple man from Haiti, could get a job as a field goal kicker with an NFL team. He just belted that goal kick virtually 10 or 12 yards into the other half of the field. Rodney Marsh, Rodney Marsh. Marsh. Smith. Puts the ball forward. And it's cut off by number 20. Like Dylan. Dylan. New York Cosmos, nine minutes approximately remaining, behind. It's just Rowe and the fullback, New York sending everybody up now. Pelé letting the ball go through, nobody there to take it behind him. That move was not read well by any of his teammates. And they had just come back from an exhibition game. They arrived here Friday, I believe, after playing in the Dominican Republic. Marsh on the right, still has the ball, being blocked off, and the referee choose to ignore that. I think that'll be a goal kick for New York. We were talking about Marsh earlier. There's no question, but what Marsh is a big atmosphere, a big game player. This is a big game for him. He wants to look good. He wants to look good against Pelé. And, and my goodness me, he has looked good this afternoon. We've seen some brilliant stuff from Marsh. And He's overshadowed Pelé. No question about that. This new crowd record of 42,611 Tampa fans here to see their Tampa Bay Rowdies snap up an early lead and they now lead four to one a brilliant hat trick by derek smethurst and one goal by clyde best one goal from the new york cosmos tony field there you see brian rowan we have a substitution for new york this looks like george siega coming on I, he's pointing to somebody to come off but nobody's going off tinian i think is going off tinian off george siega tricky left winger excellent ball control very very good at holding the ball taking on a fullback beating his man with the ball a brazilian a brazilian yes a naturalized american now though he owns a restaurant in new york city you know, Walt, great shot and it just screams over the bar he's eddie coming up from his sweeper position there's george siega
Rodney Marsh with his magic, still with the ball, dribbles, passes it off to Smethers. Smethers across the goal mouth, and here's an opportunity. Oh, another goal for Murray. the Bay. Scullion. Scullion. And it's an interesting thing. Three out of the four members of Murderer's Row have scored. Watch the score. There you see a mistake by Smith heading the ball back across the goal, right into the middle, into the path of Scullion. He deflected it. He Smith deflected, deflected it. He, the goal. He had a hand in the goal two ways. He gave the ball to Scullion, then he deflected his shot. So in essence here, we have Rodney Marsh, sort of the trigger man, playing off the ball to his other members of the murderer's row. And we have seen Smethers with three goals, Clyde Best with one goal, and Scullion with a goal. Whether they'll give it to him or not, because it was deflected off of Smith, I don't know. I think that will go to Scullion. We have a substitution for Tampa, another one. Smethurst, the goal-scoring hero, has gone off. Joey Fink, who used to be a New York Cosmos player, has come on. Another American, All-American from New York University. Fine little player. This is Fink running for the ball now. Not what, getting it. What a show Tampa Bay's Rowdies have put on for their hometown fans. They've played brilliantly this afternoon, no question about that. New York have found themselves in a lot of trouble. Talking about hometown fans, uh, Siego with the ball. That was field. Correction. Clements. Garbutt. This is Siega. Good strong tackle by John Bloom, one of these young Americans on the Tampa side. By tackle, of course, I mean an attempt to take the ball away from a player's feet using your feet. Nothing to do with knocking a player down. Again, just over the top. Mauser was there, but it was a well-taken shot. A bit high, however, by number 20, Dillon. Another defender. We're seeing increasing number of shots by New York defenders. They're pushing everybody forward now. You're thinking about the home field advantage, Paul. Immediately following this, of course, the, the sixth game of the NBA playoffs between Boston and Phoenix, of course, on Phoenix's home court. Fine header by Smith. He really does get up so well on those balls. Marvelous athlete. Jumps high, gets power into his header. Fine tackle by Auguste. Lindsay out to the left. Glover, who has slowed down his breakneck pace. Clyde Best has the ball. Bad defensive move by Eddie. Best is through. Best is through. Still has the ball. And a corner kick. The old defense, again, a bit of a shambles on that, but one has to credit excellent play by the Tampa forwards, pushing the ball about beautifully. I want to give our special thanks to field operations engineer, Artie Tin, production advisor from the BBC with us, Alec Weeks, also from the two clubs, Jim Trecker of the Cosmos and Francisco Marcos, Charles Serodensky and Marty Rotberg, Tom Meredith, all from the host team Tampa Bay Rowdies for this weekend. A standing ovation for Rodney Marsh, who's come off the field here after playing really a brilliant game. He's having a conversation with Eddie Fermani now. Tampa Bay dominating the game with an early lead in that first half. Going into the showers of the, the uh, halftime, three to nothing. Overlapping run on the left side. And a, a ball, dangerous ball. Lindsay 
I cannot understand what Rodney Marsh was up to there. He's been taken off the field and he was wandering about on the field there. And I was going to say, well, there's a player yards offside there, but in fact it was Marsh leaving the field, but still on the field of play. He's replaced by number 11, Doug Walker, who's another American player. So we've got three or four Americans on the field now for Tampa. In the waning minutes of the game, I guess the chance to play in an international, when I say international, a, a first division match here in the North American Soccer League and blood their young players for a future season. The ball high, Mauser again, high in the air. Flash of two big men there. Canalio went solidly in. He hit Mauser quite a big thumb, but Mauser, those very strong arms of his, holding onto the ball as though it was just a, a, a small little tennis ball. Glover again. Ball played all the way to the right side, turning the defense around. Stuart Scullion. Score of one goal dribble, still has the ball. Plays it. Best. He took the ball away from Best. August out to the left side. Doug Walk. Doug Walk. Plays it across the goal mouth. And Kuykendall is there, but the ever-present Clyde Best lofting into view. Clements, New York Cosmos behind. Five to one, about a minute 20 remaining. This Clements with maybe New York's last day, but I give credit to Clements. He's had a very industrious game. He's done a lot of hard work out there, and he's, he's had little support, and he's really not got much to show for it, but he's had a very, very hard-working afternoon indeed. Siega. Fine move, corner kick. Goal kick. As far as fans were seeing Pelé for the first time. There's Mauser again. We're talking about uh, Mauser. And there's Pelé. The fans here at Tampa seeing Pelé for the first time. What kind of impressions? Here's a highly touted player, supposedly the best in the world. Uh, I think they'll go home saying, well, Rodney Marsh is a better player than Pelé. Um, a fair judgment, perhaps, on this game, but overall not a fair judgment. A player like Pelé cannot play without the support that he so desperately needs. He just hasn't had it in this game, partially due to def deficiencies on the part of New York, but mostly due to excellent defensive play, well-coordinated midfield play by Tampa. It's they really garbage. clamped down on New York. When you look at the record, though, Pelé has 1,245 goals in 1,292 games. And around the world, El Rey, the King, La Perla Negra, the Black Pearl, all the accolades, all the awards. He has been on three World Cup championship teams where they have won the World Championships. Well, I've been watching soccer all over the world now for 35 years, Mario, and he's the best player I ever saw. But he needs the support, as you pointed out, Paul. Here's Mauser. And Mauser and that uh, maybe ill-fated conversation with Pelé, where Pelé said, <laughs> you, think Pelé you will, will regret play that? tomorrow. And Mauser has played, played extremely well. Made one mistake, and that cost him a goal. Here comes Scullion again with his short little legs pumping up and down. Excellent dribble of this man. Finishes it with an atrocious pass, but Pelé will love that. Kinalia has not played well. well. He's now having to wander out to the wing to find the ball. He did well with that pass. Field again. Wall pass out to field. Doors and wide. About ten seconds remaining. And that's the end of the game, I believe. The referee, and they're switching jerseys. That's the final score. Tampa Bay 5, New York 1, a North American Soccer League game. The final score, 5-1, to one, Tampa Bay over New York's Cosmos.